Hi folks, welcome back to another lab and theory video. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at using support vector machines or SVM to classify the MNIST handwritten digits. Now, this video picks up where we left off in the previous one where we used the K-nearest neighbors classification in order to classify the handwritten digits. So if you haven't checked that video out, be sure to take a look at it and I've linked it up above. Now, what are support vector machines? They are, SVMs, a set of supervised learning methods for classification, regression, and outlier detection. Now, I just read off the first sentence for you here from the scikit-learn documentation, now, but if you're interested in the theory of SVMs, you can look around YouTube. I am sure you can find some excellent videos that talk about the theory. In this video, our focus is on the application to the MNIST database and how you can take this and use it with your own data, your own data set, your own problems, uh, more a hands-on and uh, application-driven approach. So briefly though, what are SVMs? Uh, SVMs are based on the idea. So an SVM uh, or the SVM algorithm makes the following claim. It says that the larger the margin, and uh, the margin uh, is essentially the distance between the separation hyperplane. Now, uh, to describe what this is, let's take a look at this example here. Let's pretend there's no red. Let's say it's just blue and white dots. This decision boundary, this line, essentially delineates the two classes. So the margin is the distance between the decision boundary and the edge of the two different classes. So SVM says that the larger the margin is, so the greater the distance between the hyperplane, the decision boundary, and the two uh, groups of classification, the better the separation hyperplane. If we were to choose a, a hyperplane, we want to maximize this margin. So the best hyperplane is the one with the largest margin, and it's known as the maximal margin hyperplane. Now, you can, of course, augment SVMs with different kernels. So you can have a linear decision boundary. You can have Gaussian-like decision boundaries using radial basis function kernels. You can use polynomial kernels and so on. In this example, in this video, we'll be using RBFs because they uh, introduce some nonlinearity and they're pretty popular for nonlinear classification. Now, SVMs are also pretty powerful, and, and I think they're overlooked uh, very frequently when people move on and try to apply neural networks directly to data uh, to classification problems, SVMs are very powerful. So what I have here is the original page for the MNIST database. And they do have a list of some benchmarks. And you can see how a uh, K-nearest neighbors classifier just off the shelf gives you about a 5%, 3% error rate. And, uh, you know, this is okay, but, you know, if you get really sophisticated with them and you, you really optimize and customize them specifically for this data set, you can get down to about a percent or half a percent, not even half, but a little bit above that with very, very specialized uh, K-nearest neighbor uh, implementations. Now, if you compare that to SVMs, we can see the off-the-shelf Gaussian kernel, which is our RBFs, what we're going to be using, you get about 1.4%. Uh, degree four polynomial with some de-skewing, you get down to 1.1 or 1.0 percent, and you can see with a little bit of effort, you can get down to half a percent, which is a, 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 an amazing uh, performance with the uh, SVMs here. Now, compare that to neural networks, which are super popular. Deep learning is all the rage these days. You can find videos all over the place talking about deep learning for classification. You can see off the shelf a two hidden layer neural network with 300 hidden neurons. This is a much more expensive, much more complex model than an SVM. It gives you about 4.7% error. It is only when you get down to absurdly large networks, like a six layer with a, 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 a monstrous number of neurons, can you get down to the, even at 1%, you're talking a much, much more complex model. And also convolutional nets, you have to get to pretty uh, substantially uh, sized neural networks. And even here, they're augmented with SVMs to get you down to uh, the half a percent or 1% uh, range. And this highlights that SVMs, I mean, they really should be a sort of first pass approach at uh, uh, for many classification problems because they are so powerful and they're often overlooked for neural networks. So don't forget an SVM. Do not throw it to the wayside. Give it a shot. Try it on your data. If you find that it is lacking, you can move on to neural networks, which of course we will be making videos on, so stay tuned for those as well. Now in order to get started, what we'll do in this video is we will copy the previous IPython notebook, uh, which we use for the K-nearest neighbors. 
because there's a lot of duplicated code, we can just copy it uh, and we can build off of that. So again, if you have not checked out that video, be sure to click the link above, which I've uh, reproduced one more time for you. Um, now, uh, let's get started here. Uh, I'm going to list the files in my directory. I'm going to copy the mnist, uh, kmean to mnist, uh, svm tutorial.ipy notebook. Okay, I pull up my uh, directory here, uh, and uh, here the notebook is that we've just copied. Uh, what I want to do is I want to clear all of the previous output from the k-nearest neighbor. So I'm going to go kernel, restart, clear output, and this will freshen things up for us a little bit. Let's go back to the support vector machine in uh, scikit-learn. Click SVC. This is support vector classifier. This is what we will be using. Uh, there are a number of adjustable parameters, but there are some sensible defaults, uh, as is the case with many of scikit-learn's uh, implementations of machine learning. Uh, we will focus in, so again, RBF kernels, uh, we will focus in on C and gamma. C is sort of the tolerance or the penalty uh, for the error term. Uh, gamma uh, controls the kernel coefficient. Uh, what I have done is I've scanned through a number of uh, different hyperparameters for C and gamma, and I've optimized and found uh, two good numbers that work for uh, this example. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, you can automate it using uh, scikit-learn. You can do a, a hyperparameter grid search. Be sure to let me know in the comments box below, and I will make sure to make you a tutorial on how you can optimize your models using the automated grid search technique in uh, scikit-learn. Okay, in any case, I'm going to use some optimized numbers that are not 1.0 in auto, uh, but we'll get to those in a little bit. Let's uh, turn our attention back to the notebook we just copied. I will maximize this here. Uh, we want to import all of our dependencies except for one change. We'll call this SVM because that's the module or sub-module we want to use. I'll hit uh, Shift-Enter to run that. Shift-Enter for importing the data uh, from the MNIST database. And this is where we make some changes, first of all. We're selecting out the digits 2, 3, and 8 because we want to look only at a small subset of the overall digits. So we can go through together in the video, look at the digits, and sort of try to figure out how the classifier went wrong uh, or what its strengths and weaknesses are. So in this case, we'll just stick with those three digits. We do want to normalize our data by 255. Uh, notice I put point O here because we want a floating point result. We don't want to stick with integers. Otherwise, it'll, it'll either round us off to 0 and 1, uh, which we do not want. Uh, the reason I picked 255 is because that the data that we have in training data is grayscale, which is uh, 0 uh, all the way up to 255 or 254. Um, so we divide by that to normalize the range between 0 and 1. Uh, now we want to change the uh, uh, classifier here to uh, svm.svc, and we will go c equals, and I found 5 works for this, gamma equals 0 0.05. Uh, let's call this SVC for our support vector classifier. Shift enter to run that. This will take a few moments. Um, I will pause the video and we'll come back once the training is complete. And we're back. The training is complete. We have our support vector classifier model ready to go. And uh, here we take the uh, test data set and we're going to see how the SVM performs. Again, we're selecting out the indices for the 2, 3, and 8 digits. We need to normalize, uh, divide by 255.0, our X test data. Same labels. We'll make a prediction using our SVC, and we will see how this performs. So let's go ahead, shift, enter, run that, and uh, we'll be back once this is complete. Okay, that didn't take too long, about a maybe 30 seconds or so. Uh, this is complete, so what we will do is also import or define this plot confusion matrix function, which we copied in the previous video from scikit-learn. So we'll shift enter to run that. And now let's take a look at our confusion matrix and see how that, uh, how that looks. So let's run this. Uh, as you can see here, the majority of the predictions were phenomenal. Uh, let us unnormalize this. So normalize equals false. Oh, that's not how you spell false. 
Uh, and what we can see here is, uh, first of all, SVM, SVM outperforms uh, K-nearest neighbors uh, massively. Uh, we get a majority of the predictions along the diagonal are perfect, so the predicted label is 2, the true label is 2, most of them are, uh, are correct. Same for 3 and 8 as well. There are some outliers here, or not outliers, but there are some mis misfires or mishits. And uh, let's try to understand why. Uh, what's up with these digits that the SVM classifier could not uh, predict correctly? So the first thing we want to take a look at are digits that are predicted to be 2, but are actually 8. And so there's one digit in this class here. So let's take a look at this. Let's uh, control. So this is the, the default uh, uh, entry here from the previous video. Let's shift enter to run that. And uh, there's one digit that fulfills this criteria. And if you look at this, I mean, this is supposed to be an 8. Uh, so why true is 8, predicted as 2. You can see that even to a trained eye, to a human being, I mean, this, it's really, I mean, this is a very poorly written 8. Uh, this could almost come off as being a 2 with sort of a very long curly. Uh, and uh, so, you know, you can sort of understand how, why SVM got this one wrong. Uh, let's take a look at 2, 3. So uh, y true is 3. Uh, let's run that. Uh, also, let's trim our space here a little bit. I have this uh, 30 just so we can get the digits closer to each other. I'll make that 20. Uh, okay, so again, uh, it predicted a 2, but it's actually a 3. Uh, again, this, this is a 3, but it's a pretty bad 3. Kind of looks like a 2. Uh, I mean, this could be anything. Uh, and this is actually pretty much like a 2. There's a trail off here for a 3, but I guess it's very faint that the uh, SV uh, classifier did not quite pick up on this. So um, you, can, you can mistake these for the incorrect digit. Uh, let's take a look at one more. Let's see what were actually 3s, but were predicted uh, to be 8s. So predicted, uh, sorry, it's predicted to be 3s, but were actually 8s. So 8, whoops. Uh, let's run that. And uh, so these actually, you know, look like eights a little bit. They don't quite look like threes, but eight and three are pretty similar digits. I, I don't quite see it here. I mean, I, to a human being, maybe it's this extra little lip right here that made the, the uh, SVM or tripped it up a little bit. But these look pretty good. You know what? Let's uh, let's take a look at one one more. Let's see eights predicted as as three. So let's switch that around. So uh, I keep on messing it up. Predicted eight but actually three. So let's take a look at those. Uh, as you can see, you know, some of them, this three is quite eight-like. This is a squiggle. I, I, this looks like a Sanskrit letter or something like that. Uh, you can see that these threes are pretty closed. Uh, you can easily mistake these for, uh, for an eight. So I, I think the takeaway, when we compared the results in the last video uh, for the K-nearest neighbors, we saw that the digits that were misclassified didn't really have any character to them. What I mean by that is the misclassified twos, they did not look remotely like anything other than a two. They were still very good twos, but they were just misclassified. But here with SVMs, we can see that there's a little more, I, I, I hate to use the word intelligence, but you can see that there's a little more um, sophistication to the prediction. Uh, and uh, it, it picked up on a little more nuance and detail in the features such that when it makes a mistake, it's also a mistake that a human being could potentially make as well. Uh, it's not a just a very poor... What I'm trying to say is it's a very good uh, model. It does a very good job at capturing the salient features of the digits, and when it makes a mistake, it makes a mistake that a human being could potentially make as well. And this is off the shelf. I mean, I optimized two parameters a little bit, but we didn't use anything very sophisticated, and this shows us... Uh, that SVMs are, are much better at capturing, again, sort of the salient features of the digits and reducing that to a model that we can use and evaluate and make portable. So with that, I'd like to wrap up. I hope you found this video useful. I hope you realize the utility and the power of SVMs and how they're not that uh, expensive to use. And hopefully, I, 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 would, I would love to hear about you applying this to your research uh, or your work or whatever application. Leave a comment in the box down below, uh, and I'd love to hear from all of you. Thanks again for, watch, for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If, you've, uh, if you loved it, please subscribe. Uh, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Goodbye.